Tiger Stadium as Alabama comes to town. 94 seconds to go. Both teams out of timeouts. That's a pretty good way to start. AJ gets the snap. The throw. It's a first down for Alabama. Screen pass. Yeldon. To the 20. To the 10. Touchdown, Alabama. Sooner or later was going to go to number 10. And he answered. He is going to be sacked. The champions have got up off the canvas. Alabama wins. Alabama wins. The Crimson Tide comes from behind to win and remain undefeated. Welcome you to Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa on the campus of the University of Alabama. Fresh from their thrilling victory last week, the top team in the country, the Crimson Tide of Alabama. And the Aggies of Texas A&M come to Tuscaloosa for the first time ever. And they come members of the Southeastern Conference, so many ties between these two football universities that we will develop throughout the afternoon. Take a look at the SEC West. Alabama's on top, undefeated. If they win, they clinch the West, and they will head to Atlanta. And the SEC Championship game, even if they lose, the Crimson Tide still controls their own destiny. Good afternoon, everybody. Bern Lundquist, along with Gary Danielson. We got to see that emotional victory last Saturday night at LSU. Any hangover from that? Vern, uh, in Alabama, football is life and death, and Alabama football players stare death right in the eye. I think they're going to get a second win from this. I think they're going to relax. They know, they're going to relax. I, they know what they faced. They know what they defeated, and I think it proved in this football game again is why they're so tough to beat. They're the only team in college football that can beat you four or five different ways. One week's the defense. Next week's the passing game, the running game, and lastly, A.J. McCarron did it on that final drive. They're the best team in college football but got to win them all yeah you do <laughs> absolutely well texas a&m such a worthy addition to the southeast conference and they have played so well so many weeks in a row you know johnny manzel deservedly gets all the headlines for this team but if you look deeper this is a football team that has players all over the field offensive tackles defensive linemen they're a good football team but when you got a manzel putting up stats like he does he deserves all the headlines he can do so many different things on the football field to stress a defense. Whether he runs, scrambles, looks off receivers, or his timing throws, he has taken on the SEC like it's hard to believe he could do it, but he's been the magic man in the quarterback position. 101,000 will fill this place by the time we kick it off, and moments ago, Tracy Wilson with Kevin Sumlin, head coach, Texas A&M. Coach, your 7-2 start has surprised many, but your biggest challenge yet, how much are you looking forward to seeing how your team fares against Alabama? Well, we're looking forward to it. You know, we've been playing well the last couple of weeks. We're confident. Uh, you know, our guys are excited to play. We've got a great atmosphere and a great crowd. It's going to be a tremendous challenge for us, but, but we're looking forward to doing our best and, and, and playing a hell of a game today. What can Johnny Manziel and this offense do to pose a challenge to this Alabama defense? Well, hopefully we can continue to get better. You know, we've been playing well, moving the football, taking care of the ball. Third down conversion will be a big, big uh, statistic today, both offensively and defensively for us. We appreciate it. Good luck today. All right, thank you. Coach. Thanks a lot, Vern. Kevin Sumlin, who came over from the University of Houston, a very successful stint there in his first year. And under Sumlin, his teams have won the last 11 road games in a row. Six at Houston, five at AM. You could not ask for a more beautiful day. 72 degrees, slight breeze, full house. And these two teams meeting for the first time ever in Tuscaloosa. Alabama leads the all-time series. That one A&M win was Gene Stallings as the head coach at A&M over Bear Bryant and the Alabama Crimson Tide in the 1968 Cotton Bowl. Alabama won the toss. They have elected to receive to open the game. 
And the 12th man, a tradition that Texas A&M began in 1922 when DX Bible pulled E. King Gill out of the stands because he needed him in case they ran short of players. And today, that 12th man is C.J. Jones. Cyrus Jones will take it, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. We'll introduce you to the Chick-fil-A starting lineups, and we begin with a guy who's having a pretty decent season. I don't know if I've ever seen it. Uh, a, a guy going into this late in the season without an interception, an amazing stat. No interceptions on the season. None this year and none in the last 289 passes going back to the 10th game of a year ago against Mississippi State. First down 10, Eddie Lacy. And he's part of the two-back set now for Alabama. We'll also say T.J. Gelder. Out of the spread, handoff. Lacey gets a bit of a block, but a nice defensive job by Sean Porter, number 10, first tackle of the game. Alabama's offense, Quanjo. I mean, this is an outstanding offensive line. He might be the best. Yeah, they had three All-Americans returning, and he might be the best of the lot. Cooper back from an injury, missed the second half at LSU. Eddie Lacy, they may start with two tight ends. And on this play, they do have Kelly Johnson in. He split way to the top of the screen. McCarron goes to the ground, and Kirby Ennis is there to touch him down defensively for Texas A&M up front Obioha Ennis Neely and Demontre Moore leads the conference in sacks he's having a super year Jenkins Stewart and Porter pretty good linebackers and in the secondary I knew we'd get there Harris Matthews Terrell and the Shazer Everett Third down. Kevin Sumlin said this is the game. Alabama struggled last week against LSU on third down. Good protection for McCarron. Good coverage by AM. McCarron wins it. Oh, this is Amari Cooper. Yeah, he had him. You are correct by calling out good protection. You know, AM has built the reputation. They led the country a year ago in sacks. But it's tough to get through that offensive line. And McCarron had an easy one there. Missed it. And so it becomes fourth down. Cody Mandel had a good effort last Saturday night in Baton Rouge. The kick returner, the ever dangerous Dustin Harris, earlier this year, eight returns for 246 yards, including a 96-yard touchdown. Hasn't been that effective lately. Booming kick. Taking it to 12. Harris has a little bit of room, gets a, a block, and then goes down. Danae Patrick made the tackle, a 59-yard punt, and 14 on the return. Here comes Johnny Manziel as we present the Chick-fil-A starting lineups. Redshirt freshman from Kerrville, Tiley, did not win the starting job until fall practice. I think, though, this is the guy they wanted to win the starting job. He just had to learn to take care of the football. He's been doing a great job the last two weeks on the road. Ryan Swope is in the slot, number 25. Manziel, quarterback draw. Offensively for the Aggies. And they have an outstanding offensive line featuring the tackles. Matthews and Joko. Patrick Lewis, though, kind of the offensive quarterback he in the really, line. Much like Barrett Jones, he's the veteran up there. Here's Swope. That's his 226th career catch. Evans, Lamoth, Molina, Wachuku, and Ryan Swope, the wide receivers. First down 10. AM has scored first in each of its nine games this year. They've only lost twice, once to Florida, once to LSU. Quarterback draw again. Flag. And let's check the defensive lineup now for Alabama. Stinson, Jesse Williams, and Damian Square up front. 
They will go with a 3-3-5 lineup. Hubbard, Mosley, Xavier Dixon are the linebackers. And in the secondary, Blue, Lester, Sanceri, Clinton Dix, and Milner. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. As Tom Ritter, our referee, and the official call is a face mask against Damian Square. That's Ben Molina, number one. Well, a and look at this. Gary, gaudy statistics. They have been, and if you look at all the things A&M does with Johnny Manziel, the number one circled stop for Alabama is we can't let them run the football. We'll take Manziel in the pocket and live with it. We can't allow the running game to get off as well. Four wides, one set back. Manziel takes off again. Uh-oh, stiff arm. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Amazing stat for college football. Texas A&M came into the game with 251 first downs. One-third of them have been in the running game by Manziel. Bobbles the snap and gets it to Swope. Yeah, one-third out of every first down. By him running, not him throwing, him running the football. Amazing. That last game was for 29. It's second down. Ben Molina leading halfback in the game. Manziel, of course, is the leading rusher for Texas A&M. Now you see as A&M changes personnel, the umpire will allow Alabama to change personnel calmly. Perfect job. Yes, he did. Quick snap. Quick snap, and it goes to Molina. He did not get in, but he is very, very close. Tanae Patrick, number 11, made the tackle. Everyone is in another substitution. The umpire should allow Alabama to calmly substitute. Kristen Michael is in. There's Manziel under center, second and goal. Michael. Injury prone running back is in for the touchdown and for the 10th game this season. The Aggies score first. What every coaching staff has said about AM is the tempo of the game at the beginning has had problems on the defense. LSU struggled with it and Florida struggled with it, even though they ended up winning the game. You can see an AM is getting better at it than that. I watched the Florida tape. They've got way more offense than they ran against Florida. Taylor Bertolette. Well, it was the running of Johnny Manziel with the stiff arm at the end of it. Not only is he evasive, he's physical running the football. We had a number of coaches tell us we wouldn't mind him playing strong safety for us. He is a physical quarterback, and what a drive he put together against this Alabama defense. Adam Zucker in New York with this John Hancock update. We go to the swamp. Florida had trailed Louisiana. Tied here in the final seconds. They blocked the punt. Luches Purifoy with the block. Picked up by Jelani Jenkins. And the Gators escape by seven at home over Louisiana. Vernon Gary, back to you. Adam, thank you. Two touchdowns late by Florida. Yes, huh? yes. And Florida, seven and one in conference play. Georgia plays at Auburn tonight. South Carolina won earlier this afternoon. Bertolette will kick off, and Georgia can clinch the East with a victory at Auburn tonight, and that would put them into the SEC championship game in Atlanta. This one's out of there, too. Sure is. So it'll come out to the 25-yard line. First nine games, six points allowed in the first quarter. <laughs> and 
today. It took all of two minutes and 50 seconds. Well, there, there's no doubt in this football game that Alabama's going to have to score points. You're not going to, even when you control Texas A&M, they're going to score. They're going to put yards on it. I mean, he's just too good, and they've got veteran receivers. This is a team that scored a lot of points last year. I mean, you know, they have some talent. Eddie Lacy still the running back. That's Kenny Bell in motion. Number seven on first down and ten. Aggies look like they might be coming. Hand off Lacy. Lacy with a first down. A nice surge after contact was made. D.J. Fluker led the way in an 18-yard game. Well, I think you're going to see one of the defensive strategies by Alabama in this football game, and that means to pound on A&M. They were built for the Big 12. A little bit smaller, rush the passer team. Alabama must run the ball between the tackles. They'll try it again. Well, Mark Snyder, the defensive coordinator, expected this. He did. He said, We're gonna, they're going to run right at us. They call it a three technique. That's Spencer Neely, who's a good rusher, but not as good against the run. McCarron has to throw it away. When Vern, I was down on the field talking to Mark. I've known him a long time. Ohio State head coach at Marshall, the defensive coordinator now hired by Kevin Sumlin. He said, Gary, to get ready for these guys, we went live tackling all the way through Wednesday. And one of the reasons was Eddie Lacy. He said he's a spinning runner, and you must practice tackling before you face this guy. Fascinating to do yep. that this, yep. this late in the season. Third and six. And so far, AM has been keeping both safeties back. Christian not, Jones in not, the slot. Excuse me. Yep, we're not crowding the box. They're challenging Alabama to run it. McCarron down across the middle. Picked off. Intercepted. That ends a long streak at Sean Porter. A streak of 290 plus comes to an end. And it was the hit that dislodged the ball from Kenny Bell. Right over the middle, right there, it's going to be the hit. The ball was thrown well, but right into coverage. And they baited that throw to McCarron. Howard Matthews, it looked like two deep safeties, but they went late to the right. That is the first time McCarron has been intercepted since the game against Mississippi State last year. A.J. McCarron, first interception in the last 292. Take another look at it. And what it was that A&M did is gave him two deep safeties here. Half field there, half field here. But late, this safety goes this way, and this one goes deep. Watch this. Howard Matthews, number 31, baits deep and then runs to the middle. That was not reading the quarterback. That was a called play. And A.J. McCarron says, I read two deep safeties. He's actually explaining that to Nick Saban right there. And that is a defensive interception by the defensive coordinator, Mark Schneider. He stole one. And a first down at the 41-yard line. Manziel fakes the option, pulls up, drills it deep, man open, diving catch. That's Kendrick McNeil. What a great throw and catch. They faked the option, and they threw the matchup they wanted. Robert Lester, the safety, is the guy as a &M goes fast. They do go fast. The umpire backs away. This is McNeil. Michael, I beg your pardon. Kristen Michael missed a total of nine games in the last two years because of injuries. The matchup they went after was Lester right there, the safety, faking the option. Look at the middle of the field. Makes a great throw and a better catch on the play. And here is the late substitution allowed. And the ball marked ready for play. It's second down and goal. They do go quickly. Right side, Michael. Hemmed in. D. Milner was the first one there. Number 28. 
Sometimes the tempo gets you, and sometimes it gets the defense, and sometimes the tempo gets you. This time, AM kind of rushed into a couple funny plays. I think Manziel has to have the football down here. Snap from Patrick Lewis. Four-man Alabama rush. Got him. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh, my gracious. Yep. How about that? Can't teach that, can you? And you can't defend that. When you have an opportunity to sack the quarterback, that's a touchdown every time. That's Kirby Smart, the defensive coordinator. I think he thought what I thought they had. Oh, yeah. And the try for the extra point, it was Ryan Swope who caught the touchdown. Bertolette with the extra point. Well, Vern, when you have an opportunity to stop a playmaker like Manziel, you got to get him. And this time, Alabama, oh, oh look, at almost a fumble of the ball. That's what kind of threw everybody off on the play. He almost loses it, re-catches it, and keeps his wits about him. And that's why people have been asking me who he most reminds me of. He reminds me of a Ty Detmer back in his day when he used to make those scramble plays. Touchdown drive, 7-0, turnover, touchdown drive. And the pass from number two to number 25, magic from Manziel. It really was. Uh, you got a guy that the play is never dead with. And he uh, showed as he bumped into Jake Matthews, his own offensive tackle, the ball pops up. And he had the wits about him to keep the play alive. Kevin Norwood and Cyrus Jones are the deep men in case. And this one, oh, he bobbled it. Muffed it in the end zone, takes a knee, it'll come to the 20. Well, you mentioned, Gary, Ty Detmer. Let's take a look at him. Yeah, action. you remember this was the year I broke in in broadcasting. Ty made the plays, and the reason I connect Ty is his competitive instincts and that Ty knew he was the whole team. He had to make the throw. He had to make the first down. And Ty Detmer is watching, I'm sure, Johnny Manziel pull off a Ty Detmer keeping a brilliant play alive for a touchdown. P.J. Yeldon is in the backfield now, the freshman. Star at the end of last week's come from behind win, and he gets nailed by Spencer Neely, number 99. And he ran right over Barrett Jones. That's one of the change-ups that A&M was going to use. They were going to move, move Neely into the nose for this game. And he thought his quickness would give Barrett Jones a problem. So far, Mark Snyder's pulling out all the stops. Second down and 14. This is the largest deficit Alabama's faced since 2010. There's a Murray Cooper. Missed the entire second half of Saturday night's win in Baton Rouge and a freshman of enormous talent. Talking about the interception, that's why that zero interceptions on the year was such an amazing stat. Sooner or later, you're going to have a ball that's tipped or bounce off a receiver for an interception. It has to happen. That's why I was amazed going this long with none of them. Third down and nine. Alabama ineffective at LSU in third down conversions. Michael Williams. Number 89 sets up left side. Here's McCarron back, stunt blitz. McCarron has to get rid of it, and it's incomplete, and Alabama will punt. Howard Matthews, the safety, came on the blitz. You watch. 
match Nick Saban's personality. In a game when his team is doing well, he rides them. When his team is struggling, he's clapping hands, patting fannies. He's going, all right, all right, long game, we'll be okay. He really kind of gets his team, you know, over-motivated and, and, and understands the pressure of playing from behind. Mandela, 59-yard punt, first effort. Dustin Harris, who is back, at a 14-yard return. This one backs Harris up to the 20, 18-yard line. Dropped. Well, this Alabama defense has to answer the bell right now. 54-yard punt for Mandel, 7-yard on the return. 292 throws without an interception. It came to an end earlier when Sean Porter caught the deflection and set up the second touchdown. Aggies lead at 14 nothing over top ranked Alabama. And now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success, Gary. Well, I was asked, what kind of tools do you have to do to stop Johnny, Man Johnny Manziel? I said, you're not gonna stop him. What tools to contain him? And it was speed at linebacker that Florida eventually slowed him down. LSU did press coverage, but both teams, Florida and LSU, hit the quarterback. I think that's key. You cannot allow Manziel to dance around and not make him pay for having the ball in his hands the whole time. 53 yards passing, 35 rushing. And Alabama, if they're going to stop him, Vern, is going to stop him without their best corner on the field. D. Milner's in the locker room. First down, 10. Manziel to slope again. That's a combination that has worked all season long. C.J. Mosley made the stop. Here goes the quick huddle. Largest deficit since they lost at South Carolina. 35-21 October of 2010. Then they were number one and the defending national champions. Another pass complete. This one to Thomas Johnson, number eight. Well, I'll tell you. People ask me, why is Manziel so effective running the ball? Well, first of all, he's a good runner. But secondly, he's a good thrower. That's the key. I mean, you can stop a, a running quarterback like a Denard Robinson. You have to be able to throw. Nick Saban's going to take a timeout. They got the wrong group out there. Well, Milner hustled out. He came back from the locker room. They also had put Geno Smith, number 24, on the field along with John Fulton, number 10. Timeout, Alabama. Regional coverage the NFL on CBS tomorrow. Lead game early. The Broncos at Carolina. And uh, some markets in the late area will get the Jets at Seattle. It all begins with James Brown and the quartet. The NFL today, tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern, presented by Southwest Airlines. Now Alabama has its defensive group that it wanted on the field. Manziel, Molina goes left. C.J. Mosley is a part of that. So is Adrian Hubbard, number 42. And a timeout for the measurement. Yeah, and, and A&M had a trick formation going, coming off of that first down. Had Jake Matthews lined up as a wide receiver. Let's watch what they may do later in the game to show that again. They run the third down play here for the first down and then come right out of that with a kind of a gimmick formation. Measurement was good in favor of the Aggies. They got the first down. This year, Manziel has been north of 550 yards in a game. AM, six first downs, 109 yards. Alabama has two three and outs and an interception. Swope again. Kirby Smart and Alabama are starting to dial up some of pressure going after this offense. Go, 
Mark ready for play after the defensive substitutions. Molina sets up left side. Four down for Alabama. They come with just the four. Manziel deep. That's going to be overthrown at the 20-yard line intended for Ryan Swope. Think about it now. Alabama will substitute when AM substitute. AM brings a guy on. Alabama will bring a guy on. The umpire will control that. You can't go fast when you substitute. Third and six. Look at Saban. And Nick, Alabama, one of the few defenses that switch their defense if the offense they think is audible. Blitz, Manziel, watch out. Boy, when he gets out of the pocket, no holds barred. Did it again, didn't he? Another third down conversion. That's three for three. Also, the touchdown was on third down, and look at him hurrying up here. Here's the gimmick formation with the tackles out at wide receiver. Tackle here, tackle out there. And Jake Matthews, number 75, and here's a quick one. Out to the left side, Thomas Johnson. Luke Jokel and Jake Matthews. Try to say that fast. Yes. Jokel and Jake Matthews were both out at wide receiver and tackle. They tried to do it on the first down prior. You can see it. Here's one of the tackles, and there's another one of the tackles. I bet one of them wasn't lined up on the line of scrimmage. A little huddle to see if they did it right, or was Alabama too many men on the That's field? That's what I'm wondering. Yep, could have been. I saw a guy leaving late. Jeffrey Pagan, number eight. I know the linesman was there peaking. Were two fouls on yep. the play. Illegal formation, number 75 was not on the line of scrimmage. Illegal substitution on the defense. The substitute did not get off the field. Those penalties offset. We play first down. It was an illegal first. Remember, that time AM did not substitute. Alabama tried to substitute, and this guy doesn't get off the field. And after all of that, first down 10, five wide, empty backfield. Patrick Lewis will snap it back, number 61. Stunts defensively by Alabama. Never say never, here's Manziel. He'll run, gets a block from Lewis. Vern, one of the things that pops out in tape, if we can even watch this, they go so fast, <laughs> is the offensive linemen, when they lose a guy, stay alive. They know there's going to be a scramble sooner or later, and then when they lose their man, they turn around and try to pick up a crackback type block. Manziel, right side. Malcolm Kennedy, number 84. C.J. Mosley gets him, but not before. At the 15. Raise your hand if you saw this coming. Not me. First down, 10. A&M has been unstoppable. Blitz, hand off Molina. They go over right guard. Xavier Dixon, number 47, was the tackle. How about this? The only time they've allowed. Here's a pass to Swope, spins. And he's down. Milner was the second one there. Dion Blue was first, number 13. One thing is evident about, evident about this Alabama football team. They do not have a superstar pass rusher. They need help on the front four. They do not have the one guy that's a mismatch. They do it more as a team. They don't have one overpowering pass rusher. Three of three on third downs thus far for the Aggies. Third and six here. Alabama's bringing blitz inside 
It's caught by Thomas Johnson. Guess what? First and goal. Well, Cliff Kingsbury got an assist from Johnny Manziel on one touchdown play. But besides that, the offensive coordinator for AM is pitching a perfect game. Everything he's calling right now is one step ahead of the brain trust at Alabama, Saban and Smart. Ben Molina is the running back. First down goal, leading 14 zip. Two minutes to go, first quarter. Molina drives. Got it. Touchdown, Texas AM. Kelly's smiling as he's watching this game right now. To the left, Kevin Sumlin. The fellow without the cap is Cliff Kingsbury. Was his knee Fire down under further review. before he got across the line? And Alabama fans are going, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Steve Landis is our replay official today. And yeah, it was yeah, she was it, short, yeah, wasn't he? Yeah. It was a first down play, remember? It'll be second and in inches. Maybe a second and a foot. There's the knee. And I go back to that first third down play by A.J. McCarron when he had Cooper, Amari Cooper, wide open and missed the throw. That was a big sign. And Alabama needed to put yards on the, the board. They needed to make first down and keep this offense off the field. After further review, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball crossing the plane. The ball will be put at the half-yard line. It'll be second down. Both sides knew the importance of third down in this game. Early in the football game, it's been all Manziel. Yeah. He's missed one throw, and that was a deep throw, which kind of opened up the field for his offense anyway. Kristen Michael will be the running back, number 33. Right guard, Cedric Kovoyhe, number 70. Patrick Lewis. Left guard is Jarvis Harrison. They hand it off to Michael. I don't think he got it. I do not believe he got in. Brandon Ivory, number 62, was the first one there. All right, so call this defense if you're a defensive coordinator. Yeah. You've got a pretty power offensive, powerful offensive line with Matthews and Joko at tackle. They've, they're veteran players. They've been there. But now you've got a quarterback that can run or throw. You come off the edges. Do you pinch? Do you try to keep Manziel in the pocket? What do you do? This is the 14th play of this drive. Third they, goal. They love to cross the tight end and run the ball. There he goes across and run the ball. It's Michael. You calling it fourth no, down? No, fourth down. This is going to be reviewed as well, I'll tell you. They love to cross the tight end and run behind it the other way. Oh, boy. That looked like he was in there, didn't it? Yes. Well, I know his head was in. I'm not sure if the football was in. A little higher view. The field was that the runner was down prior to crossing the plane. The previous play was under further review. So far, I don't see anything that I could turn over the call. There's the initial contact. Boy, I, I, I got to say, if I was making that call, he had that football in the end zone. His knees did not come down, but I'm not sure because of the call on the field, I don't see the football. Do you see the football? I do not. Logic tells you the football's in the end zone, but you can't use logic. 
Well, you can't see his helmet I there. I see the helmet across. I can't find the football. There it is right there. Remember, the front of the line counts. It doesn't have to go over the line, just any part of it. One more time, if it, as it touches the ground, where is the football? I'm gonna say touchdown. Only because we've worked together for so long and we never disagree. I'm gonna go say the other touchdown. Way? No, 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 <laughs> no, the election's over. Well, yes, that's true. <laughs> Well, this is a big call, oh, and, I, boy. And, and I bet that A&M goes for it if it's fourth and short. After further review, the runner did cross the plane, touchdown. You got it right. Well, the ball touched the front of the line. It does not have to go over the line. And, and you know what? Good look. Good, yes. good work by our crew to find the right angle. Yes. And remember, yep. from the back look, his knees weren't down. The first thing that went down was the football. I think that's the right call. How about this? 21 nothing. Taylor Bertolette. To 41 seconds. 41 seconds. And Bertolette for the extra point. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that's, I gave it to him. I conceded it to him. That's not his first miss. He came in 47 of 51. He had missed four. Make it five. Nevertheless. Yep. 20 zip. It is a brilliant afternoon in Tuscaloosa, but there's some gloom and doom in the stands for Alabama fans. Another look at the touchdown. Yeah, just to make sure we wanted it. These are perfectly in sync. The computer puts them together. You can see his knees are not down when the ball is touching the ground. Remember Kevin Sumlin, Sumlin said to Tracy before the game, third downs are the key stat for us. Oh, yeah. Five of five so far. Yes, one of them was a touchdown. I remember the first one of the game was A.J. McCarron had a wide open wide receiver. I believe it was Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper. He misses a throw right there. He's got him. Leads him just a bit too much. That kind of turned the tide early in the game. Total yards 172 to 26. So we have not completed the first quarter of play. Another touchback. To get the latest news, analysis, and predictions from Tony Barnhart, Bruce Feldman, and other CBS Sports experts, watch College Football 360 live weekdays at 10 a.m. Eastern or on demand at cbssports.com slash college football 360. Of course, nobody would be surprised. Alabama, of course, has to play maybe a little faster, but they can't not give up on the run. They're too good at it. And they've got T.J. Yeldon in that running back spot right now. Three receivers split left. Barrett Jones over the ball. A&M stunts. They go up the middle again, and Yeldon. Demontre Moore, number 94, who is having a demonstrous season for the Aggies. That's his nickname. Comes in with 11 and a half sacks and 19. Well, look at this. 2009 Sugar Bowl when they lost 31-17. Third and two. Well, they haven't seen a quarter like that around here in a long time, have they? Whoa. That's the end of the first. Are you shocked? Texas A&M 20. Alabama nothing. We'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium after this message. 
And this word from your local station. for the second quarter at Bryant Denny Stadium. 101,000 for the most part in stunned silence right now as Texas A&M has rolled over the defending national champions and lead it 20 to nothing. Do we count in the 100,000 or is it 100,002 in stunned silence? Yeah, right that's now. right. My gracious. I can only imagine the emotion in Eugene, Oregon, That's right. Notre Dame, and Manhattan, Kansas right now. Third and two, and they're 0 for third down in the game. Norwood starts in motion, sets up. Norwood. And Norwood has the first, first down for Alabama. Who would have dreamed to be saying that? We start the second quarter. The first, first down for Alabama. Vern, two weeks ago, when I was doing interviews around the country, the most asked question I had was, can Alabama beat an NFL team? Right. Right now, they're wanting to know, can they get it back in this game? Here's Yeldon up the middle again. Well, you said it a while ago. They do. They cannot give up on the running game right. yet. Well, th that's where everything starts for Alabama. If they get into a shotgun pass the game, that might work in a two-minute offense. But they need to be who they are, and that means run the ball first and then run their offense off the running game. Second and short. This is Lacey. First down. And more. See, powerful and finesse in the same running style at once. Lacey again, almost broke the big one. But so far, so far in this game, the A&M defense of tackles are not crumbling. That was the big fear for Mark Snyder. Could we hold up inside? Those two inside men are Kirby Ennis, number 42, and Spencer Neely, number 99. Neely, particularly an undersized defensive lineman. Now blitz threatened. McCarron gets a good block, but downfield coverage. Now he breaks it and almost back to the line of scrimmage. And it was Kirby Ennis who got it. Now I think Alabama will be thinking with this call that we have two downs to get a first down. Michael Williams in conversation with McCarron. Breaks a tackle, but he's not going to get enough to move the chain. Here it is, fourth yeah. and short. It'd be a long distance field goal, and it's 20 to nothing. They're going to go for it, aren't yeah, they? They sure are. Kenny Bell is a late add to the offensive huddle. They leave Jeremy Shelley and Kate Foster, their two field goal kickers, on the bench. Fourth down and four. Lacey in the backfield. Cooper is top of the screen, number nine. Kenny Bell and Christian Jones near side. Three down for AM. They bring five. Out of the backfield is Lacey. I guess. Boy, he got a good Real spot. Close his foot. Yeah. That was a great spot. Now keep in, in, in mind that the yellow line is unofficial. And McCarron's trying to hurry him up and get to the line so it get, doesn't get a review. Wow, he 
gets a stretch. That last foot went right across the line. Remember, still reviewable. Alabama would do well to get up to the line of scrimmage and snap it, and they are. Good strategy. So Lacey just did get the first. McCarron under Barrett Jones now on first down and 10, trailing by 20. Cooper moves up on the line. Jones moves back. Lacey left side. Following Quan Jones block. And he's knocked out of bounds. DeMontre Moore got the stand, the uh, tackle. Well, when you run the ball to the left side, you get Chance Warmack and Cyrus Quanjo, the two physical guys on this team. DJ Fluker is as well, but I think Quanjo and Warmack is the way they like to go when they want those tough yards. Second down, six. 25-yard line, trailing by 20. 11 men up for AM. Nobody deep. Play action. Little slight fake. Michael Williams down the sidelines. First and goal. AJ knew he had the play on on this one. Nobody deep, no safety. He knew that he had the tight end on a fake block and just roll out to the outside. He had the perfect play on. Let's give one to Doug Nussmeyer. He called one at the right time. And Offensive John coordinator. Jonathan Stewart was the blitzing linebacker. First down and goal. Yeldon cuts back and leans down to the two. Maybe inside. Barrett Jones is having a tough time cutting off the nose tackle in this football game. I think it's Neely again. He's out quicking him. Number 99 gets into the backfield again, and Barrett Jones has to push him by and a good cut behind him. Second down goal, 13th play of the drive. It's Yeldon in the backfield. Great answer by Alabama here. They needed this drive so bad. just a mash. Just follow those five guys up front. It's wedge blocking. Anthony Steed, kind of Steen, folded around number 61 to get one more guy to the left side. Too much power. Jeremy Shelley is perfect on extra points this year. This makes him 44 of 44. Fine answer from the Crimson Tide under Nick Saban. 13 plays, 75 yards. They got a first down on fourth and four. A little toss to Eddie Lacy. They get the touchdown from the freshman T.J. Yeldon. Adam Zucker in New York. We had a crazy finish on Rocky Top. Missouri's last chance. Fourth and 12. Look at the catch by Doriel Green Beckham from James Franklin to tie it. And in quadruple overtime, Andrew Baggett from 35 yards out. Tennessee still winless in SEC play. Vern, Gary. All right, Adam. Thank you. Johnny Manziel. He's been nearly perfect so far. 74 yards on the ground and 10 of 11 throwing the ball. Well, some stats he's putting up the way he's playing is like a video game out there. These are plays from earlier in the year. <laughs> a personal favorite. Both Kevin Sumlin, his head coach, and his offensive coordinator, Cliff Kingsbury, saying he really had problems in spring ball taking care of the football. Freelanced a little too much. Went out to California, worked with a quarterback guru this summer. Came back and won the job in the fall. And he has been sensational ever since. Here's Kate Foster with the kick. Trey Williams, number 20. Yeah, that one's Flag. coming back, yep. Yep. 
This will be the first time. Deep field position. I think it was Ben Molina that had the block in the back. So what does Alabama do here? Third okay. in the return, the illegal block in the back. Number one on the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Vern, I think the first thing Alabama has to do is not panic and throw their game plan out the window. They've made some good plays, A&M has. Just go back, tell your team we're okay. If you change things now, they'll sense panic in you. I just stick with the game plan and tell them, let's tackle. Tackle in space. That's what they got to do first of all. Saw the graphic on Manziel. Another four yards rushing, and he'll go over 1,000 rushing and 2,000 passing. There's the pass. Beautiful. Kenrick McNeil, number five, with the catch. Yeah, they faked the bubble screen that time, and Alabama bit right on it. Manziel calmly threw the slant right behind it. Draw point. Kristen Michael. And a couple. Again, any time AM substitute, Alabama will substitute even if they don't want to because it slows the pace down. Second and seven. Empty backfield again, five wide. Three man rush now for the Crimson Tide. Manziel drills it. He's been near perfect. That's Mike Evans, the redshirt freshman. The only pass that Manziel has had incomplete today was an overthrow on a deep route. And it's first down 10. Let's try the left side. Malcolm Kennedy. What I think makes Johnny Mansell so good is like Michael Vick was a runner who learned to throw a little bit. And actually Cam Newton was a passer who could run. Johnny's about even in both. He's, you know, 8.5 as a runner and 8.5 as a thrower. He doesn't rely on any one part of his game. And a second down and five here. Blitz. Manziel up the middle. Caught and drop. Ed Stinson got there, number 49. Aggressive call on second down from Alabama. Remember, we talked about they don't have the one guy to put pressure. They have to help with the blitz. Sanceri looks like he's faking coverage. They're going to switch it out here now. Sanceri, number three. C.J. Mosley is 32. He thought he was going to fake coverage and blitz, but they switched it up. Yep. Here's Manziel from the backside. Didn't get him the first time. Didn't get him the second time. My, and boy, my, do you my. pay for it. Great balance. What an athlete. Puts his hand down, doesn't go down. Dixon had a chance, couldn't get him either. Swope, now up the middle, it's Michael. Number 33, seven straight completions. He's now 14 of 15 for 114 yards. Remember Zach Mettenberger last Saturday night had his best game of the season against this Alabama defense. And they're yielding yardage again yeah, here. The only thing Johnny Manziel's just having another game. Yeah, that's right. Here we go. Not this time. Nico Johnson, number 35. And third down again, and AM six for six in the game. I watched Alabama in practice try to do this up tempo for an hour. And you know what they did? They made eight, 10, 12 mental mistakes trying to go against this up tempo team. They load up with four to the left, one to the right. On third and four, blitz. Nico Johnson comes. Manziel goes right. How about that? Yes. Mike Evans leaned out and got the first down. One of the things 
plays that Nick Saban was upset with against LSU. He told us that the LSU receivers gained 104 yards after the catch. Here's three important ones right there. Comes left. Christine Michael. And let me rephrase that just a little bit. 104 yards after first contact, contact yeah. after the catch. Just like those three after the contact after the catch. So the Aggies are answering that uh, first effective drive by Alabama. And we're under six minutes to go before halftime. Blitz from the corner. Manziel got him from behind this time. That was Robert Lester who was kind of sneaking in from the backside. And you can see Kirby Smart has dialed up second down blitzes on back-to-back -back series. Let's see what he does on third down. C.J. Mosley's the quarterback. He's calling the fronts. A&M a perfect seven of seven on third down conversions. A&M changes their play. Alabama changes the defense. Molina. Nothing. First time they've been stopped on third down this afternoon. Quinton Dial and Damian Square. I wonder if A&M will go for it as we look at this play. Interesting call again, taking the ball out of Manziel's hands, trying to do something different. They thought they had Alabama. Bama changed their defense. I think they caught. That was a win by Kirby Smart over Cliff Kingsbury on that one. Fourth and six. Offense remains on the field. Nellis let the clock run down yeah. and then decide what to do, either taking a timeout or just take the penalty. Texas a now. At last, Alabama with a third down stop. We'll be right back. Fourth down six, Kevin Sumlin has made his choice. It not appears surprised. he's going to go for it. Not yep. surprised at all. There's six weapons on the field, five receivers and the quarterback that can run. Fourth and six. Manziel pulls up. Oh, I think he's going to be just yes, short. Yes, he is. That's the speed at linebacker that you have to have. You cannot play defense against this offense without speed at the second level. The linebackers have to come and make the play, and it was C.J. Mosley that made the play. Little push in the back yep. by Mosley. And it forced Manziel out of bounds. Remember, the ball's in his left hand. Had he had it in his right hand, he might have gotten the call. 20 to 7. We're back in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Let's take a look at that last play on the Avis action cam, Gary. Well, C.J. Mosley makes the tackle, but very interesting where Mosley actually comes from and why you have to have the speed to run down the quarterback. Mosley is right there. Watch how much distance he has to cover as he drops into coverage, and now he has to sprint across the field, take on the leverage, and make the play. That is a linebacker that can close some space. So Manziel stopped about a foot short, maybe two. And the ball goes over on downs. Alabama trailing by 13 with 4.10 to go in the first half. We all remember a couple of years ago when they led Auburn 24 nothing in the Iron Bowl in the second quarter and wound up losing that game to the eventual national champion. Got Play deep. action. McCall. Oh, oh, wow. McCarron and Christian Jones hangs on. He had either one. Yes, he did. Amari Cooper, the real speed receivers at the bottom of the screen. Watch him split. 
the coverage for AM, but the crossing route is open too. He's got him deep. But a beautiful drop off on first down. Good decision by A.J. McCarron. And that's a gain of 18. And off Lacey coming right. Nice little stutter step. And another first down. He hangs on as he is hit from behind. Boy, he jumped to stay inside. Yes. In from not going out of bounds. And this run reminded me the way Trent Richardson wouldn't go out of bounds. Remember Trent during the sideline? I'm not going out of bounds. Watch him jump back to stay in and finish off the run. Trent Richardson is a number of uh, one of 42 former first team All-Americans for Alabama who is here today. Play action. McCarron. Oh my goodness. No, he was out though. Okay. Yep. That's Cooper again. That's good, good defense by AM. They saw the sneak play, meaning a bootleg with a receiver coming in the short zone, nowhere to go with it. And AJ had to go downfield, nothing there. Good defense by AM. Second down and 10. Cooper goes to the left with Christian Jones. Williams, the tight end, is tight right. This is Kevin Norwood coming to the right. AM shows blitz. Left side, Cooper. Looks for a block from Christian Jones. Doesn't get much of one, but he moves it inside the 30. Well, as Alabama comes up for this third down play, let's just emphasize how big that fourth down stop was. AM, with three minutes to go in the half, would have taken at least another two minutes off in this first half. And remember, they get the ball to start the second half. It was a huge stop by the Alabama defense. Alabama one of five on third down conversions. They need six to keep the ball alive. McCarron gets a block. Fluker and the catch is made. First down Alabama. Fluker came back and gave McCarron time to get free to make the pass. He cleaned it up. AJ obviously cannot run around like Johnny Manziel, but Fluker cleans it up for him and then a perfect throw on the run to the outside. And a first down 10. McCarron now 8 of 13. 2.21 to go. Two timeouts for beat each team. Wow, Christian Jones. Yeah, that one shocked me. I thought for sure we were going to get the hammer right there. I thought they were going to run. AM had three defensive linemen in there. Remember, Vern, when we were visiting with Mark Snyder, we were going over the depth of defensive line, and he was naming off about eight guys, and he goes, in truth, though, only about five of them are going to play. Yeah. And I thought for sure we'd see the hammer and run the ball inside there. Second down and 10. That didn't nope. look right. I think Chance Warmack or Quanjo started a little early there. Snap, false start. 71 offense, five yard penalty remains, second down. It was Quanjo, left tackle. You don't say much about this guy. All he's doing is handling his man. He can't get that baby to go as well as he must be getting old. <laughs> you are literally losing your yeah, touch exactly. I used on to the telestrator. Stop yeah. that thing right away. Yep. Yeah. Second down 15. Or the telestrator's getting old. What that could be. Watch out from behind. McCarron fires it. He's got Cooper. See what the spot is. It looks like, according to the unofficial yellow line, that he's got a first down and goal. He's doing a little bit of Manziel to AM, just keeping the play alive, keeping his eyes downfield for a first down. It is a first down and goal. They are going to hammer here, aren't they? You think? Nope. No nope. play action. Right side. Jones moves inside, ankle tackle. And it's made by Tony Hurd, the nickelback, number four. They're calling him down a couple yards prior to the line. 
Another one of those bootleg plays that so frustrated LSU in the national championship game, but LSU did a good job against them last week. Was his knee down? Yeah, I don't know. And the Verizon Red Zone stats for Alabama. 29 touchdowns out of 39 trips inside the 20. Second and goal. To the two, perhaps the one and a half. Again, folding around with Warmack. You see the guy, the defensive back just goes for his feet. He wasn't going to take on big 65. Here comes Jesse Williams. Nose tackle will be the lead blocker in the backfield, number 54. Third and goal with 36 seconds to go. And really effectively running the clock down and keeping it away from Manziel no matter what happens. Lacey is the running back. Lacey, left side, Lacey leaning. Lacey's in. Touchdown, Alabama. Williams and then an effort by Lacey must have just broke the plane before he got pushed back we got to get are we going to get a review on this yeah, yeah I'm sure there we, we are. are that had to be yes because it's going to be fourth the prior play is under further review let's see if we get a look at this I'm mean, it's so close I'm going to use Vern's monitor he's got a big one up here <laughs> Pushes. Can't yeah. tell from that angle. I actually think he got in. I think that you can't yep. overturn that. I think the football got in. It was the guy, the, the official to the top of that screen or the left of the screen here. Who made the call. Yes. yes. And I think he got in. I think that'll be upheld. One more look. There comes the official, and he had, I think, the clearest view. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing else on that. Those pictures could overturn that call. So, like I should have done the first time, Alabama has a chance to make it 20 to 14 instead of just conceding the extra point, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and the conversation continues. We have no camera that's positioned on that far sideline. But it was the official who had the clearest view of the ball who made the call. That was the gamble that Kevin Sumlin knew he was taking when he went for it on fourth down. Gave Alabama an opportunity to do it, but I thought it was worth the risk. If you're going to beat number one here in Tuscaloosa, you got to take that risk. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. We say it over and over, don't we, Burn, to win a national championship. You're going to have these battles. You have to earn that championship to go undefeated. You get the best shot you're going to get from everybody every week. Jeremy Shelley with the extra point. He is perfect, as we have said, for the year. And he remains so. Well, the fourth down play did not work for Kevin Sumlin. The Aggies used that opportunity, and they yielded the touchdown to Alabama. We're back in Tuscaloosa. Let's take a look at today's poll question. SEC Player of the Year candidates, Jadavian Clowney, Jarvis Jones, Johnny Manziel, A.J. McCarron. We just arbitrarily picked those four at the top, and the question is, who is the Player of the Year right now? Log on to Facebook.com slash SEC on CBS to make your choice heard.
I don't know who's going to win it. Those four pretty good players, I'll tell you that. Aren't they? Well, I think the one play AM would like to have back is the third down call prior to the fourth down uh, attempt that didn't make it. When they ran it. And they, they took the ball out of yeah. Manziel. They both audibled, both AM and Alabama. And I don't see how, you know, Manziel's 15 for 60, and they took the ball out of his hand. Yeah, they ran Molina instead. And this one is boomed by Foster. Trey Williams. And here's the play that uh, Gary has questions about. Yeah, remember this time uh, A&M switched, Alabama switched, they ran it inside, and I think they ran it because they were going to go for it on fourth down. They thought they'd get two or three yards. They did not get anything on third down. And a quick reminder that we'll go back to New York. Adam Zipper, Spencer Tillman, the Geico Halftime Report on this uh, November Saturday deep in the 2012 season. And AM will take a knee. They once led by 20. Eddie Lacy got the touchdown just a moment ago. We've got a bit of an interesting second half Great coming up. Great football game. Back-to-back -back weeks here with everything riding on it. Twenty fourteen, and let's go down to Trace, who is with Nick Saban. Coach, I don't think anyone expected that kind of start from them. What did A&M and Manziel do to give you so much trouble early on there? We expected that kind of start because that's how they start against everybody. Except we didn't get off the field on third down when we had chances after the first drive. And again, it's getting to the defensive players and the rhythm of the game and the speed of the game relative to what they have to do. We made some mistakes on defense and lost con contain, and we got to get off the field on third down. I mean, if you create that situation, you have got to get off the field on third down. Do you feel more confident going into the second half now that they felt the rhythm? Well, we, we played better as the half went on. So, you know, we, we got to carry over. We got to make some adjustments. Got to do a better job. Thanks a lot. All right. Vern? All right, Tracy, thank you. And a reminder that Florida played well in the second half and defeated A&M. LSU played well in the second half. Those are the only two defeats so far this year for A&M. Let's go back to New York and Adam Zucker. The Aggies score first. And it is intercepted. Texas A&M at the 50. How about that? And off Lacey follows the beef. He's to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Alabama. The tide is scrambling back into this ball game. We're ready for the set of the third, start of the third quarter in moments ago. Tracy Wilson with Kevin Sumner. Coach, you jumped out to a 20 to nothing lead, but it seemed like Alabama started to get used to the tempo. How do you keep them off balance here in the second half? Well, we got to do a better job of keeping them off the field. You know, we moved the ball down the field and, and uh, stalled out at the 30. We just got to do a better job of, of uh, keeping them off the field, getting off the field on third down, and then, you know, keeping our offense rolling and get into the red zone and score points. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. Byron? All right, Tracy, thank you. A&M will receive the kickoff to begin the third quarter. Trey Williams is back. And Cade Foster, who's put roughly half of his kickoffs into the end zone for touchbacks this year. Of course, the new rule has moved it up to the 35. Watch a coup. The wide receiver is also back in case it's a bit short or to the left. Here's Foster. And he does go left, and it'll go through the end zone and come out to the 20. Obviously, a big fourth down stop by Alabama. They get the ball back. They hurt. Do you think they've weathered the storm? I wouldn't count on that if I was Alabama. Okay. The way Manziel can throw the ball, I, if I was Alabama, I would think about what we did well. And what they did well is run the ball with power and figure out a way to pressure A&M and Manziel with the blitzes. They brought just enough blitzes to keep him off balance. I don't think you can sit back. you got to change it up. But, you know, Vern, A&M has some skeletons, too. From last year, they blew second halves against LSU and, 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 and uh, Florida, as you mentioned before, skeletons in the closet for them. They got those nightmares. Here's Manziel. Hands it off. Draw play. Molina on first down and he picks up almost five. See Jake Matthews number 75. 
Brother Kevin played here. Matthew's family, of course, one more illustrious in all of football. Here's the quick snap. Manziel. They keep him contained and punish him. Yes. And that's what you need to do. Damian Square led the way. If the other team is going to run their best passer, which obviously as the quarterback, he's their main runner and passer, you must put a physical toll on him. Third and six. You have to hope he feels it in the fourth quarter. Three wide to the left. Is the blitz coming? Yes, it is. Manziel darts right, goes back to his left. How quick. My goodness, now he heaves it, and it's caught, but short of the first down. Ryan Swope came back. And you said the key word, the blitz. Alabama has been more aggressive since the beginning of the game. When they started, they were playing a lot of combo coverages. Sinceri makes the tackle, but this was going to be well short. The and extra rusher has been the difference. Ryan Epperson is on. This is the first Aggie punt of the ball game. Christian Jones is back to return it. It will bounce short and out of bounds. Well, one up for Alabama, three and out for Texas A&M. Halftime trends. Well, when we watch this first game, you got a quarterback that's that hot, and the way he runs the ball, I mean, he's a tough guy to defend. The only way to do it is get it out of his hand with the blitz occasionally. A.J. started slow, but you can see he finished off the half like he usually does. Lacey and Yeldon, the power. That is what should slow down that A&M defense and keep Manziel off the field. Eddie Lacy is behind McCarron on first down. Lacy darts outside. Knocked outside by Stephen Jenkins, number 42, 45. Here's the change. You see the line call being made by Barrett Jones. Cooper and Jones are on the near side. Second and five. Aggies bringing four. McCarron going deep. Tipped incomplete. Beautiful play downfield by Howard Matthews, number 31. Matthews had the hit on the interception and defended the tight end very well that time. You got... Big Michael Williams, a bit of a mismatch right down the seam. But you can see Matthews gets underneath the throw. Perfect defense. And now can Alabama remain on the field? They're only three of seven on third down conversions. Good coverage. Third down five. Kevin Norwood starts to the right side and sets up. McCarron, linebacker rush then. McCarron, whoops, and it's tipped and incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Yep, coverage downfield that time. Julian Obioha got a hand on it. Really nobody open downfield. Flushed out of the pocket, you can see it. Got a guy, got a guy over there. Nothing really available for McCarron to safely throw the ball downfield. And up front, he gets it knocked down. That sets up Cody Mandel. And the deep man for Texas A&M is Dustin Harris. Mentioned he had that 246-yard game earlier. Has slowed down considerably. The last uh, five games since South Carolina State, nine for 34. And this punt. Oh, in. wow. Yep, yep. That's in. 60. Hasn't been the greatest of days for A.J. McCarron. He will let you know how he feels. A.J. McCarron 
One interception for the first time in more than a year. For more on A.J., let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, what a scene after the game-winning touchdown drive last week. A.J. McCarron seemed crying on the bench. It caught a lot of people by surprise, but Nick Saban said that's just McCarron. He's extremely passionate about the game. McCarron said a lot had to do with the enormity of the moment. It's not easy. Um, always playing here, there's a lot of pressure to win. And, uh, you know, sometimes it, I, I think it can get the best of you. And, uh, you know, um, I guess I, it was also just extremely happy. So um, just a lot of emotions. I think that's a remarkably candid answer. Absolutely. And, and, and all of us that have followed, you know, the, the icon teams in college football, the ones that have to win them all, you have to understand what it's like to play quarterback for them. Now, what does A&M do? They've stalled a bit. I think they've got to go back to the running the ball with Manziel. Or throwing it. That's going to that's gonna come back, I think. Okay, the flag is down. Mike Evans made the catch. I don't know if that was early pass interference, but I did see... I thought it might have been a push-off by the wide receiver. I think it was Mike Evans who caught yes. the ball, yes. It's going to happen right there. Pass interference, number 13, offense. Half the distance to the goal, replay first down. Well, that was in between, to tell you the truth. You're trying to get jammed. He's just trying to get the defensive back's hands off of him. It was Fulton that time, number 10. And that has been one of the change-ups that Alabama has used. They've put Manziel inside. Usually he's on the outside playing corner. They've got him over the slot as a change-up versus a and High snap. Fake right. Manziel contained in the middle and caught. That's the key. Nick Saban said, we just cannot let him get outside. This was a great play by Jesse Williams. He read the screen. It was a fake one way, but a screen back the other way. And Jesse Williams was in the middle of the screen. Manziel had nowhere to go with the ball. Loss of one, second down, 21. Five-man rush. Sanceri's coming on a blitz. Got him. That'll be down at the one-yard line. C.J. Mosley, who had a huge play on the fourth down effort late in the second quarter. Mosley runs right through the block that time by Molina. Right through Molina. And Manziel does a good job of avoiding the safety, knowing where he was on the field. Loss of eight, third and 29. That's why I thought the quarterback draw, the way they started the game for AM, might get them off the mark for AM. They've gone all throwing here. Got the snap off in time. Flag is down. Molina is down as well. Looks like they'd be holding and probably decline. Very interesting call by Nick. How confident is he? Does he want to make them yeah. punt from way in their own end zone? Or does he just take the ball? Holding. During the run on the offense. Up and leaves the climb. Fourth down. Disastrous series for AM. Sure was. A penalty on first down, an aborted screen pass on second down, a sack involved in it. Well, I guess it was first down again when they did it, then a sack on second down and just a run, give up run on third down. That brings on Ryan Epperson for just the second time this afternoon. Christian Jones is back to return the punt. Fair catch. Got it. Good field position, 48-yard line. Well, I was a bit surprised by Alabama's second down call on the pass to Michael Williams. I think they should pound AM a little bit more in this football game. They are tiring AM is. Johnny Manziel ineffective in the first two series of this half.
The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Hershey's. Kia. Red Lobster. And by Verizon. We welcome you back to Tuscaloosa as the sun goes down in the west. AM 20 to 14. They once led by 20. Tuesday on CBS, it's a crime so big, the law and the mob will join forces. A can't miss episode of TV's number one news show, Vegas, Tuesday, only CBS. Alabama gets it for the second time in the third quarter, and they've got terrific field position now. Let's see if they uh, were listening in the huddle and you follow your advice. Well, the other thing about AM's defense that has held strong, they have not been gashed for that long run, you know, that 30, 40 yard run that turns the field upside down. So far as they've kept it, you know, within reason for Alabama's running game. Eddie Lacy is the running back to the left of A.J. McCarron. Blitz threatened. Blitz coming. Quick screen to Christian Jones. Doesn't get much of a block from Kenny Bell. And has to fight to hang on. And it's time now. Cue the duck. Aflac. The Aflac trivia question. Who was the only Bear Bryant coached player to win the Heisman Trophy? No, it was not anybody at Kentucky where he started his career. Then, of course, at AM and here at Alabama. One player. Again, AM very tight to the ball right now. Second and nine. Lacey. It'll be third and one. And let's go to the studio for this Heisman Watch presented by Nissan. Here is Adam Zip. All right, Vern, thank you very much. How about Monty Ball, a finalist from last year, 198 yards, three touchdowns against Indiana as Wisconsin clinched the leader's division berth in the Big Ten title game. Of course, Colin Klein back in action as Kansas State tries to stay perfect at TCU tonight. And Kenyon Varner at Cal later on. Vern? All right, Adam, thank you. Third and one here. The Crimson Tide trails by six. Left side. First down, Lacey. Well, Heisman hopefuls. This is our list. You can argue Kenyon Barner, Colin Klein, Marquise Lee, McCarron, Monte Teo. Notre Dame of the game on the road at Boston College tonight. And I can tell you with the type of viewership in this game, that guy right there, Johnny Manziel, if he pulls this one out, will enter the Heisman uh, even more than he's already been mentioned. Yes, sir. First down and 10. Play action. McCarron looks deep. He's got a man. Norwood can't hang on. Wow. wow. Let him just a little yep. too much. Look deep again, AM again. Stop the down throw, downfield throw. The ball is about a foot too far. Norwood, who might have had the wind knocked out when he hit the ground, certainly collected some sod. One of the heroes in that come from behind win. Yeah, had three catches on that last drive. Yes, indeed. They set up the screen to TJ Yeldon. See if Mark uh, Snyder, the defensive coordinator for AM, is guessing that Alabama will run here and crowds the box. Let's see what he does. Spread formation, but AM does crowd the box. All three wide receivers wide right. Now Kenny Bell comes in motion to the left. Yep, they stopped it. They, they, were, they were anticipating the run there, weren't they? Jonathan Stewart, number 11. Bit of a uh, finesse play. And AM was playing run all the way. Bit of a zone draw there. And AM was crowding the line of scrimmage. They were not buying pass on second down at all. Third down, 10. Alabama trailing by six. Aggie 
Yankees bring only three. McCarron steps up, finds the short man. It's Lacey. Lacey leans forward, bangs for some more. Huge conversion on third down. What did Mark Snyder tell us in our phone conversation? He thinks A.J. McCarron is the best in college football and hitting the check down. This is the check down. The running back short is the check down. If nobody's open downfield, drop it off. He might run for the first down. That was a gain of 21 and a first down at the 19-yard line. 7.03 to go, third quarter. Lacey. You know who was really good at that is Greg McElroy. You know, he won a national championship doing that, hitting those checkdowns. Now, he had a Julio Jones to open up the back end, but he was always conservative with the football. Kevin Sumlin looks on. Remember the nightmares for AM second half in 2011. They thought they got rid of it against Ole Miss, but it always stays in the back of your head. T.J. Yeldon is the running back now as McCarron changes the play. Looks out at Kenny Bell. Still has 10 seconds on the play clock. Blitz threatened by AM. Yeldon. Howard Matthews with the stop. You got to think forward as a play caller. You got to think forward as a head coach. A six point game. Three points is important. You're in field goal range, or are you in four down territory? That's why you get paid, well, a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's Kelly. say he gets paid well to make those decisions. Kelly Johnson is the lead back in the eye. Third and two. They give it to Yeldon. Yeah. He is stuffed. Gave, back, gave up on it a little bit too much. Cut back too early. too soon and he cut back right in to an unblocked player they gotta go field yeah they are gonna go field goal well and they go to their short field goal kicker who is perfect for the season jeremy shelley his longest is only 38 yards but he's nine for nine coming in he is the only starter in the ncaa to not miss a kick this year this is from 28 yards out That one just shaved the upper. <laughs> Whoa! So big stop for a and They handed the run game, kept it within three points, but Alabama took that field position and made something positive out of it. And Vern, you're right, by two feet. Thank heavens he doesn't have a draw. We'll be right back. Johnny Manziel quiet in this half, but he was electrifying in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, I thought when they got him off a little bit running the football, whether the quarterback draw or the scramble, he really kept this Alabama defense off balance. He made that brilliant play, just improvis improvised it. But you can see when he's running the football and running around, he's causing major problems. I'll bet we're going to see a quarterback draw here and try to reestablish Manziel as a runner. Well, they've had two possessions in this third quarter of play, the Aggies, and two three and outs. The last one was particularly memorable for its deficiency. They wound up third and 31 from the two. Alabama has scored the last 17 points. They found themselves down by three touchdowns and a missed extra point, accounting for the 20. Here's Kate Foster to kick off. Pooch this one. Yes, he did. It's Trey Williams, number 20. And it's time now to uh, call the duck back in and give you the answer. The only Bear Bryant coach player who win the Heisman Trophy. I bet some of you knew that. John David Crow, 1957. He's among a group of 27 Bear Bryant coached players from Texas A&M who gathered last night. That's Gene Stallings on the right 
And what a night it was. We uh, were able to film an hour filled with reminiscences about the bear, some of which we might tell public to someday. And, and, and any of it you can use not on cable? <laughs> yeah, a, a couple of things. It was a great night, and what a wonderful group of men. Ten of them, the Junction Boys. Flag. Delay. Delay game, number two, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, this offense for AM started off red hot. But lately, even though their quarterback is still 16 for 17 in the game, it does appear that Kirby Smart has found a formula to pressure him. Here comes the blitz again. C.J. Mosley coming. The catch is made by Mike Evans. That's his third catch for the red shirt freshman. There's no stopping this. You cannot stop the back shoulder comeback to the outside. Johnny Fulton, number 10, I believe, is in coverage. That ball's in the air to the back shoulder before Fulton can turn around and look. Three catches in the game now for Evans. He's had four or more in every game played this year. High snap again. They hand it off. Michael up the middle. Three wide left. One right. Blitz coming. C.J. Mosley again. Manziel comes to the near side. Knocked out of bounds by Vinny Sonseri. It'll be short of the first down marker by a couple. I, yeah, but I don't think this was a called run either. I think something fooled Manziel and spooked him out of the pocket that time. I think that was a pass play that he just tried to scramble on. Third and two. Casey Moreland, the umpire, rightfully stands over the ball to the all oh, uh, player and he got off. Left side. Catch made. Player loose. Thomas Johnson. Yeah, Robert Lester was the guy who should have made the tackle. The blitz from the field was coming to the left side, and Manziel threw it right over the top of it. Lester missed the tackle, and Thomas Johnson makes a big play out of a short pass. Ruled out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That was uh, Kristen Michael again. Again, it's going to be slowed down because AM substituted. Second and seven. He can th throw. Yes. High school quarterback. Back to Manziel. Kenrick McNeil was a high school quarterback. I've seen him throw the ball downfield. That was going to be a double pass. Manziel, this is a lateral. He was going to try to go deep, but Manziel read it. And took some punishment. Got game third, tackled. Yep. On third down. So now third down and four. Late third quarter. Defending national champions down by three. They once trailed by 20. Rush. Manziel comes near side. Tip. Caught by Evans. Short of the oh, Let's see what the spot is. That's John Fulton. Number 10 for Alabama, and the spot appears favorable for the Aggies. Evans very physical on that play, fights off, and then, oh, it's really close. They snapped it quick, though. Michael up the middle. Vinny Sonseri with the tackle. Take another look at that Mike Evans catch. Evans, a high school basketball player that can go up and get the ball on the fade pass and the high pass. He kind of posted up that time to make the catch. He did. He's 6'5", 218. Corner blitz again. Manziel 
being chased finds Evans again all of a sudden that combination working very very well for the Aggies what's nice about Manziel is when he scrambles he's willing to take the short pass he's not looking for the home run ball which frustrates the defense ball at the 25 Ryan Swope number 25 and he was out of bounds got three different Alabama players tapping out right now they're so tired one of them is CJ Mosley and Kirby Smart set him right back on the field the priest tried to come in but Smart said no way second and four late subs Darrell Walker they is in now. only have 10 men on the field they had Alabama had to take a timeout. They only had 10. They were 3 3 4. Last minute, third quarter. AM by three. We're back in Tuscaloosa where uh, confusion sometimes has reigned. Yeah, just Gary. watch the Alabama bench right here. Four different coaches, seven different players. One guy comes on. Do I want to stay on? Do I want to go out? We don't have enough. They grab Jesse Williams over here, 54. He's going to go out. No, he's not. They grab him back. Mass confusion. It's second down and four. And at the end of all of that, they had 10 players on the field. Yep. That's why they had to take the timeout. Yep. Ryan Swope just set a new career school record. He surpassed Jeff Fuller, who graduated last year. 234 career receptions for Swope tough, nine in this game. Tough matchup at the bottom of the screen. Johnny sure. Fulton against a bigger receiver. Gives away five inches in height. And they go to it. There you go for Fulton. And Mike Evans thought he should have gotten the flag thrown. Yep. You could tell that ball was going there. You could just read the body language by Evans. And no penalty there. You're allowed to face guard. Manziel had hit 14 in a row. He's now 21 of 23. Gary mentioned he's comfortable settling for the short pass. Third and four. Will they bring the blitz? I believe so. Illegal procedure. Full start. Number 70 offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. That's Cedric Obwehi. The right guard. You can see Obwehi that time. He anticipates the blitz. And the snap did not come first. Relatively error free game. Only the sixth penalty called or accepted. Third and nine. Straight four-man rush now for Alabama. Manziel. He's being chased by Square. He gets by Square. I think he came up short again, though. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. Yeah, I think he got no, that one. Yeah. One of the things that Kirby Smart felt about AM was the four-man rush. They actually have the ball in the left hand. They might want to look at that. He thought the four-man rush with death because he did not have enough speed at defensive end to handle Johnny Manziel. He was true prophetic right there. Molina down near the 10. Haha, -ha, Clinton Dix. Legal name Hashan. AM's gonna get this game into the fourth quarter with the lead. They are now. 10 of 13 on third downs, and that includes two three and outs in this half. 14th play of the drive coming up. That is the end of the third quarter. That is the end of three with the score 2017. Texas A&M leading Alabama. We'll return to Brian Denny right after this word from your local station. We 
welcome all of you back to Tuscaloosa. And I don't think the Aggies are through celebrating. This was the scene as they went to the fourth quarter break. Up by three. Trying to maintain a perfect record on the road and to do so at Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa right now. Here's Manziel with the toss right to Molina, chased by Mosley, got him. And I thought if they gained any yards, they might go for it on fourth down, but I don't think they gained enough. That's really long on fourth down here. Running the option, strung out well by Alabama, and C.J. Mosley runs him down. Times this third down now. I thought it was four down territory when they thought of that call. Third and six, leading by three. Let's see what the call is here if they're thinking that way. Right side, Evans. How about the defensive play? Great play. John Fulton, who had been beaten on four consecutive passes, has made back-to-back -back terrific defensive And play. he's got a tough match up there. Remember, he's the changeup. They've moved Milner inside, and he goes through the football. Wonderful coverage. Those two back-to-back -back stops force the field goal try. I think if they'd have gained any yards, they might have gone for it on fourth down. And Bertolet is three of eight in the last three games he's missed an extra point already today low snap got it little Hoyt Wilhelm on that ball yep he had a little knuckle yeah but it was a huge back-to-back -back stops there for the Alabama defense on second and on third down Bertolette celebrates And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. It was all A&M in the first quarter on their first visit to Tuscaloosa. Kristen Michael puts the Aggies up after the extra point by seven. A brilliant play here by Johnny Manziel. Bobbled it, got it back, and found Swope open in the end zone 14 to nothing. And then Michael, a one-yard rushing touchdown. The extra point was missed. That gave the Aggies a 20 to nothing lead. They began the comeback. First of all, Yeldon for two, 20 to seven. And then after a fourth down stop at the Aggies, it was Lacey for two, made it 20 to 14. A field goal from Jeremy Shelley, cut it to 2017. And then just a moment ago, Bertolet knuckled it inside the right upright. And it's 23 17. I thought we were expecting a, a really competitive game. I didn't know it would be quite this. Well, Alabama has caught a hot quarterback. Receivers, remember this team averaged 41 passes a game last year with Ryan T uh, Tannehill, right. their quarterback. So they're used to throwing the ball. They've got receivers on this field that can go up and get it. Alabama's in the fight of their life again this week. I think they have to continue to think, run the ball. A&M has 62 plays already through three quarters Alabama just 45 they need to rest their defense and pound the ball that sounds like a reprise of the it, LSU game it doesn't is it? Yeah. it is here comes the kick after the field goal and this will be taken near the goal line Cyrus Jones number eight out near the 23 now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. We go back to Alabama and Barry Jones, who graduates in December with a master's degree and a four-point GPA, a three-time academic All-American and a finalist for the Campbell Award to be presented, the academic Heisman back in New York. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to Alabama's general scholarship fund. Remember, Alabama believes they have the best offensive line in football. It's time for them to prove it. McCarron takes it to Lacey. Caught and dropped all the way back at the 19. 
Now let's go back to the studio for a John Hancock update. Here's Adam Zipper. All right, Vern, thanks very much. Matt Barkley and Marquise Lee having some more fun. They connected 12 times for 178 yards, including this 80-yard score against Arizona State. They win 38-17, a win next week against UCLA, and the Trojans take the Pac-12 South. Vern? All right, Adam, thank you. It's second down and 13 here. Three wides to the right. McCarron. There's the adjustment. Lacey has it. Spin move, and he's going to be far short of the first down. Sean Porter makes the tackle. Well, they've moved to Montre Moore, number 94. All around, he was rushing as a linebacker that time. Stopped inside by Barrett Jones and Anthony Steen, but nowhere to go with the ball downfield. Third and six. McCarron, 13 of 22 for 115 yards. Right side. Missed him. He yeah, had him, too. He, him. he was open. Yes, he was. So far in this game, Manziel has been making the throws, and A.J. has been just off. On the play, and he let him out of bounds. So Dustin Harris will go deep. Cody Mandel will punt. I saw it, pointed to himself. That was me. Harris, two punt returns in this game for a 10.5 average. And Mandel has three punts in excess of 50 yards. Harris back at the 21. Avoids the first contact, heads right. Gets by the second man. Can't get, oh yes he did. Wow, two guys from Alabama missed the tackle. Well that time Denzel Duvall, number 30, could have had him on that one. Completely missed the tackle. Watch him. Number 30 coming up and make the play. There's Robert Lester. Both of them whip, and he gets another five yards. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Napa. The Home Depot. Liberty Mutual Insurance. And by Bud Light. Welcome back to Tuscaloosa, a full house, 101,000. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. And, oh my goodness, look at this, overwhelming. CBS Facebook poll, who's the SEC Player of the Year right now. Johnny Manz, I think a lot of eyeballs are watching this game. I don't blame it. I don't either. He wins this one here. He's showing the rest of this conference that you better come when you play Alabama with a quarterback. And a &M has a quarterback. If you're wondering, the last comeback by Alabama when they trailed by 20 or more all the way back in 1989 when they defeated Ole Miss. Here's Manziel. Wings it over his intended receiver who was Wachuku, number seven, Uzoma Wachuku. Controlled rush that time. They were not going to let him get outside the pocket. And it's really maybe one or two of the, you know, he's only missed a couple that would been off target. There's been some defended, but not many, many off target. Second and ten. This is a design quarterback draw, Manziel. Wrapped up by Quentin Dial, number 90. Inside, taken on inside by Trey DePriest, number 33. He did not give up an inch on the block from the center that time, Patrick Lewis. Now let's see where Manziel decides to go. It's Wachiku, before you light up the emails, not Wachiku. 
Uzoma Wachiku, number seven. Third and nine. Four man Alabama rush. Manziel with a lot of time. Deep down the middle, and it's caught by Ryan Swope. Oh, did he thread that one? Well, I tell you, you got to give Swope so much credit here because he knew he was going to get nailed on this one. The ball hung. Swope's going to go right down the middle. Two split safeties for Alabama. Playing cover two. It's all they're doing is zone. Swope puts his hand up, and he knows he's going to get hit by a couple safeties, Lester and Clinton Dix. Yeah, you saw him peek with... Take a look at Clinton Dix coming on and then went back and concentrated. Did he get hit with a taunting penalty right here, though? Um, he might have. There is a flag down. Aren't you allowed to do that when you get the tar knocked out of you? Personal foul. Defense contacting Whoa. receiver. Defense's receiver above the shoulders. 15-yard penalty. First down. He got hit, there's no doubt about that. Remember, they're trying to protect the receiver with the ball in the air. Did you see Swope look? Yeah. He knew it was coming, helmet to helmet, and that is the call, and the right call. And it came on third down, a 29-yard pass, and then a 15-yard penalty. You watch that. I mean, that's courage. He peaked and he knew. Manziel right side. Evans and Fulton having some battle. And John Fulton has won the last three of those little one-on-ones. And you know what he's getting over there. One time it's the fade. The next time it's the fade stop to the back shoulder throw. And Fulton is competing, just like you said, Vern. Second down, 10. Aggies by six. Manziel is 22 of 27 for 188 yards. Michael inside the 20. Kristen Michael, who tore an ACL last year against Oklahoma. That was after a broken leg suffered in 2010. And there was a little bit of why me and you understand that and he has fought hard to come back and be a contributing factor for this texas a m team it's third and four interesting call here the field goal makes it a nine point game patrick lewis making the line call snaps it back manzel deep right side into the end zone another, the hands. Play, another play Fulton picked him again, didn't he? Yes, he did. With his left hand, I think he popped it loose. Let's watch it. Evans is going to cruise inside this time. Fulton stays with it. And I don't know if he dropped it or popped it loose. Uh, he basically dropped that, didn't he? I think so. That brings on Taylor Bertolet, the freshman redshirt who is now 12 of 20 for the season. This from 37 yards out. Right. Wide right. My, my, my. How about that? A oh. ball of that for nothing. A ball thrown maybe four inches too high. Could have been a touchdown. And then the kick slides right and never hooks in. It was the same knuckleball that you called before, Vern. And Manziel knows it. Alabama is still alive. A lot of enthusiasm from Nick. We invite you to help the victims of disasters like Superstorm Sandy. Text Red Cross to 90999 to make a $10 donation to the American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund. CDS cares.
Well, Vern, um, I don't know what to call. I'm not sure you know what to call. I'm not sure Doug Nussmeyer knows what to call. But I think Barrett Jones, who made a great call at the end of the LSU game, number 75 right there, when he called the screen pass, might be the guy to go to. What do you think, Barrett? Well, he's the, un the unquestioned leader, I think, of this Alabama team. He started at guard all last year, was out at left tackle, has moved to a position that uh, he had never played save for one all-star game in high school this year at center. T.J. Yeldon is the running back. Gets the handoff, comes right. Barrett Jones is going to get called for holding. He's had trouble all game with Spencer Neely, number 99. I think it was Neely that he had to hold on the play. Watch Neely right in front of him right there. There's the matchup. Trying to get outside. Neely continues to run, and Barrett Jones got a grab on him and pulls him down. And that wipes out a very nice Third run by Yeldon. Holding, number 75, offense, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Great adjustment by Mark Snyder, the defensive coordinator. He talked about moving Neely to the nose to put some quickness on Barrett Jones, and it has worked great for AM in this football game. There's Neely, number 99. His dad, Ed, played the NBA for 10 years. He's an all-star at Kansas State with Rolando Blackman. McCarron. Deep. Oh, he's got Amari Cooper wide open. Cooper. He ran and out and up. Remember all the square outs to the sideline just missing. This time he goes out and then long. Bit on the play. Watch this. Out and up. Whoa, the big ball the defense that time I think it was Everett number 29 and a big play for AJ McCarron in Alabama that's a gain of 51 on a first down and 18 longest play of the game by far offensively for Alabama Yeldon is the running back he goes left Breaks into the secondary, it. and a fumble. Yep, and Adams got that football. That's the second game in a row that Yeldon has bobbled it. Recall that he fumbled at the 10-yard line last Saturday against LSU. Big gash play, six or seven yards. Gets into the secondary. It's ripped loose on the play. I think Stephen Terrell, number 21, ripped it loose. He did, and Dustin Harris is the guy who picked it up. What a play by Stephen Terrell. Second turnover in as many games for T.J. Yeldon. Well, there's a contrast in emotions on your left. Yeldon, who fumbled. On your right, Dustin Harris. Second turnover for Texas A&M. Don't forget the Jeep postgame show. We'll go back to New York with Adam Zucker, scores and highlights of everything going on in college football as soon as this one is in the book. Play action, Manziel. He's going to go deep right again, and he's got oh slow. Oh, gosh, what a pass. Oh, wow. A wheel route, and he put it like a baton in a track race. Put it right in front of him. Swope never broke stride. Alabama player is down on the field. You got to wonder how much gas does Alabama have in the tank? 80-some plays last week. Swope's going to wheel and go down the sideline. The Alabama safety almost bumps into his own guy. Spin. He beats Sinceri. He runs by Lester. And look at this throw. Incredible throw. You cannot defend that play. When that kind of throw, remember Swope, who had the tar knocked out of him, comes back and knows he's going to get hit again and goes and gets it. Hit by the same man, number six, Ha Ha Dix. Nine on 
one to go in the ball game. Texas A&M leads by six. At one point, they were up 20 to nothing. And now, after a 51-yard McCarran pass to Amari Cooper and a fumble by Yeldon, Ryan Swope comes back with his 11th reception in this ball game, and a beautiful pass from Johnny Manziel. Stunts defensively. Manziel comes left side. Ball wobbles. It's caught. Touchdown. Malcolm Kennedy. And you got to know the play calling in those back-to-back -back plays. Kevin Sumlin did not trust his kicker. He was going for a touchdown. He didn't want to see another field goal try. But those are two perfect throws. Back-to-back -back perfect throws. He knew he had him at the snap, too. Nobody to the old whole outside of the field. They will go for two. Milner, the injured player for Alabama, number 28. Stunning turnaround. Yeah, it looked like Nick Saban's bunch had uh, had it set up for a go-ahead drive with that 51-yard catch by Amari Cooper. And now Manziel and the Aggies will go for two. They're trying to remain undefeated on the road in their first year in the SEC. Manziel back to the end zone and complete. Well, it was D. Milner on Malcolm Kennedy, but what Johnny saw was nobody back here. He knew where that ball was going the whole time. Kennedy one-on-one -on, -one on the slot, throw it to the corner, only your guy gets it or nobody gets it. No safety back there. He had his guy running there with his eyes lit up. Johnny Manziel is 24 of 30 for 253 yards. And his team is on top by 12. Redshirt freshman Johnny Manziel earned the starting quarterback job in fall camp. Got off to a brilliant start and has kept going. <laughs> His mom and dad lived in Tyler. They were both members of a Tyler Lee High School golf team. No surprise, is it, that Johnny Manziel's a scratch golfer. Also one heck of a baseball player. I, Vern, I asked about the field. What's tougher, a three-wood over water on a par five or Alabama? And he said, a three-wood over water. I guess he's confident as well. Cyrus Jones for Alabama. Oh, he ran, ran into, into it today, Patrick. Yep. There's also a flag down. Looked like he had a seam to gather some speed, and Patrick is shadowing his guy, and he runs right straight into him. Well, important to note that uh, should Alabama go Every down in this game. Block in the back number 21 of the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Here are the current standings. Alabama, even if they lose, still controls their fate. They can still get to the meeting with the East champion in Atlanta. Vern, that's true, but it's not the fate they're going for. No, no, no. And the fate they want to play for is the national championship. Hand off, Lacey. Yes, sir. Uh, you are judged by the fan base at Alabama by every victory. And because of what's happening around the country with undefeated teams, it does not appear now that a one-loss SEC champion will be in the game. They need help, Alabama does. Left side, Lacey got it. And then it's popped up high, and it uh, falls incomplete. And boy, he really took a pop. Sure did. And the Alabama fans are going, is that not a helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot? Mm. 
reaching out for the ball, losing the ball, losing his balance, and gets hit right in the head. It's DeShazer Everett. Oh, oh man, that's helmet wow. to helmet. That's going to be, he's out. Lacey's out. He's barely making it to the sideline. No flag. Obviously, Alabama needs two possessions. They're really not built for this, are they? Or they showed one drive. Can they do two of them? Third down six. McCarron gets the snap. He's got the first down. Marvin Shin. Well, I can only imagine the following of this game going on in Eugene and South Bend, Manhattan, Kansas, the current BCS top 10. And as you all know, Louisville went down earlier today, so there are only four remaining undefeateds, and one of them is on the ropes right now. Kenny Bell. Johnny Manziel. Staggeringly effective this season. Yeah, there's no one in this league that thought a quarterback from A&M or Missouri was going to do that to this league, right? No one thought that the pass offenses from the Big 12 entering this league could do that. Me included. 29-17, to go. McCarron has lost only one game as a starter. That was here in last year's game of the century. When Louisiana State came in here and won 9-6 in overtime, only to lose in the rematch in the BCS championship game. McCarron yelled it. Got a first down. Out to the 42. AM has all three timeouts left. Alabama has only two. They had to use one on a defensively confused circumstance earlier. Remember, right now, Alabama's thinking ahead. Do they go onside kick? Do they dare give it back to AM again if they get a score? McCarran pulls up, intercepted. In front of Amari Cooper. No, they're going to say he was out of bounds. It was DeShazer Everett. There was a little bit of excitement on that Aggie bench, wasn't there? Yeah, it sure was. And this one, it was a lob throw by A.J. He thought he had... Well, he tried to put his right foot down before his left foot came down. You got to review this ball to see if his left heel and it landed out of bounds. Yeah, it did. They're still going to review it. They are going to look. Oh, but it could I think be challenged by a and &M. I wonder if someone has challenged this. Does his toe come down? Prior to the coach's challenge, we got notified by the replay booth that this play is under further review. That seems like a very good call to me, that the left foot. Yeah, the question I have, and I'm, I, All right. to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. It does look like his toe comes down first, and then his heel comes down. Does that count as a toe in ground, or do you have to get your whole foot down? Go ahead, you take that one, Vern. I, I knew you were going to hand <laughs> off. I knew the baton was going to be fast. His toe comes down in his heel. I'm going to say it's out of bounds. Even though I don't know, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Look at there's the toe. The toe, usually when you drag the toe, but I think you have to finish the play, and I think he's out of bounds. All of a sudden, I'm recalling John Madden's uh, argument that well, went on see, for when years. Well, see, when you drag your toe going out of bounds forward, your heel never hits. Right. But when you're going backwards, you have to finish the play, is what common sense tells me. That's a big book, Vern. I don't know everything. I understand. <laughs> but you do study it, and I, I appreciate try. that. I, I know you do. Remember Madden? One foot equals two. Oh, yes. no, one, what was it? one knee equals two feet? Yep. That's right. Here's Steve Landis. Uh, After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Second down.
So far in this drive, AM has been willing to give up the short pass. There has been really no pass rush at all. Very conservative series for the AM defense. Here they come. Yeldon has it. Brought down, nice tackle by Jonathan Stewart, the middle linebacker. That was a hot read to the outside. Yeldon coming from the left. He sees the blitz, dump it off, and you're right. Good tackle allowed the play and the clock to keep running. Which now shows 6.21 to go. McCarron's got Cooper. Cooper's got a foot race. Cooper has a touchdown. It's a five-point game with 6.09 to go. The corner is going to blitz, and then Matthews is looking at the quarterback. Watch Cooper stop, look, no ball, and then go. You peek inside, you get burned. He runs right by Howard Matthews and into the end zone, and now Alabama doesn't need to go onside kick. An emotional A.J. McCarron heading down to congratulate his teammate, Johnny Manziel. Are you kidding me? We got to go back to work? Ninety-four yards in nine plays. The touchdown comes from McCarron to Cooper, 54 yards. What an alert play by Amari Cooper. McCarron, six of eight on the drive. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah. He thought, am I hot? Since the corner didn't get there, he went deep. The quarterback and the receiver read it exactly the same. Cade Foster with the kickoff for the Crimson Tide. This one can be returned and will be from two yards in by Trey Williams. Hauled down at the 21. Ranzel Watkins made the tackle. Well, he's going to be a breakout player for Alabama if he isn't already. Amari Cooper is the speed that could take off the top of the defense, and you saw what he could do there even though he limped it in. Vern, think about what Texas A&M has done. They've gone over 400 yards in offense. That's the ninth consecutive game that they've gained over 400 yards on offense in this defensive league, the SEC. And it's the second consecutive game Alabama has yielded more than 400 and yet they're only five down the Aggies have played turnover free football Manziel batted backwards second and ten that was Dean Milner that time number 28 coming off the slot that knocked that one down second and ten Blitz, Manziel, still alive. Oh, he is elusive. He is, isn't he? And he never, you know, he's gotten hit hard, what, four or five times in the game? Even though he's thrown it 31 times and ran the ball 17 times. Third and five. Well, we said it come down to third down, didn't we? Alabama shows blitz. Now they back out. Manziel with the change. How will Alabama counter? Lester backs up. Mosley up in the line. Manziel, they contain him. They've got him. 
Jesse Williams first to arrive. The Aggies have to punt. Well, they dodged death last week, and now the Alabama offense has a chance to get the ball back, and they know they got four downs to pick up every first down. Ryan Epperson will punt. Christian Jones is back to return. He's way back at the 31-yard line. Epperson, good punt. But Jones will have a chance to return from the 35. Not very far, however. Well, the Alabama defense has been struggling all game to stop Johnny Manziel, but they did it on three straight plays. First, it was Milner. On second down, coverage, and they handle Manziel. And on third down, again, coverage. And this time, it's Mosley forcing the sack to Jesse Williams. Three straight big plays. And the Alabama law offense looks across to the defense and says, thank you. One chance to go on the field with a chance to win the game. 4.27 remaining. The defending national champion, Alabama Crimson Tide, at home, trailed by as much, as many as 20 points. They fought back, just scored on a 54-yard pass, and now have the ball. The Alabama bench has been telling the fans to quiet down, and they do. Play action. McCarron deep down the middle. He's got Kenny Bell open. Kenny Bell at the six. and dunk it, and what did they do? They run right by him. Gets to the verse, running right by the safety, Tony Hurd, and an easy, actually two guys could have caught that ball. And McCarron got a great block from Eddie Lacy to allow himself to step up and complete the 54-yard pass. First and goal, Bell to the left. McCarron. Sean Porter with the tackle. Second and goal. <laughs> Kelly Johnson, Eddie Lacy in the backfield. They'll try this I formation. Didn't work the last time they ran from this formation. Lacey follows Johnson. Didn't work very well then either. Third and goal. Two more tries, but the AM defense has not given up the big gashing run. Maybe one or two all game. Five, third and goal. Kenny M's going to rush the house here. They do. McCarron bumps once, gets a good block. Quanjo, now he's got a freelance. McCarron can't find anybody open. He'll run. Down at the two-yard line, it'll be fourth and goal. This is reminiscent of Greg McElroy. He did. Two years ago. And you know what? Alabama really can't take a timeout. They may need them if they don't make the touchdown. What does AM do? Do they chase them? Do they come after them? 147 to go, fourth. And goal. McCarron will throw it. It's intercepted. To Shazer Everett at the goal line. Alabama was really running their 
two-point play. This is the one they saved. They were trying to pick, but Everett did not get picked on the play. Sneaking out this guy and trying to get him to the flat. Everett says no way. Gets outside, slides outside. You could see Cooper tried to pick him, but he couldn't get to him. And three turnovers in the football game for Alabama. Manziel wasn't even watching. No, he couldn't look. <laughs> well, A.J. McCarron went 292 passes without an interception. He has been picked off twice in this ball game. And T.J. Yeldon fumbled once. This is Molina. Another look at what might be championship hopes gone south. What a nice job AM did at kind of picking out who had who. As the Alabama receiver comes across, everybody has to shift players, and they did it perfectly. Time call. Second down five, Alabama trailing Texas A&M, 29-24 on a fourth and goal. DeShazer Everett stepped in front of a pass intended for Kenny Bell, thrown by A.J. McCarron. And Vern here, if Alabama gets another stop and A&M runs it three straight plays, and don't make a first down, Alabama will get the ball at about 35 to 40 seconds max. Second and five, Alabama one timeout remaining. Blitz from the corner. They stop him. And time is called with 125 to go. Crimson Tide, no timeouts remaining. One twenty-five remaining in the ball game. Aggies leading by five, and they're looking at third and two. No matter what you do, if you're Alabama, if you're Blitzen, you must run through the quarterback. If he hands it off, you got to depend on the defensive lineman. You can't let Johnny Manziel bootleg you for a first down in the game. As you call blitz you remind your players account for the quarterback don't let us don't let them gimmick us for a first down Manziel hands it off to Molina and he is cut short 120 to go Alabama cannot stop the clock I think Excuse me, Kevin Sumlin will run the clock down all the way to one second and take a timeout, then punt the ball. 19 seconds remaining on the play clock. And time call. 40 seconds to go. Standings currently. Alabama 6-0, 9-0 for the year. A&M in second. Mississippi State, LSU with 3-2 records. Ole Miss, Arkansas, and then Auburn. Auburn playing Georgia tonight. A Georgia win would send them to Atlanta as the East champions in the SEC. Alabama, important to note that even with a defeat, still can get to the championship game. Right. But the interesting part of the strategy here, if AM would have just kicked the extra point, they would have been able to take a safety here and to eat another time off the clock. Now they can't. If they take a safety, it becomes a three-point game. So they're forced to punt it. Does Alabama go for the block or the return? Exactly. What's it look like? Can't tell. They fake it or they go with it. Ryan Epperson is the putter. Uh-oh. Who jumped? 
Fingers are being pointed in both directions. Oh my. Neutral zone faction offside on the defense. The defense got into the neutral zone, causing the offense to fall start. Five yard penalty, first down. The Alabama player stuttered it in the neutral zone. The AM player reacted to it. At least that's the call on the field. Right up here. You could see the play. That's the way it was called. Unnecessary play. Come on, man. Do that. Tyler Hayes. Number 36 is the guy that tried to do too much and ended the football game. Johnny Manziel, 24 of 31, 253 yards, two touchdowns. He also ran for 92. And let me say it in all due respect to Johnny Manziel. Johnny football played a great game. And did Johnny Football put himself in position to be a Heisman Trophy winner? The dream of defending probably has died for Alabama. The Aggies are still unbeaten on the road in their process. Well, Vern, I do have to say, Notre Dame's got a couple of got tough game you'll have, you'll have to, with USC and Kansas State doesn't have any walkovers. Could they climb back in again? Because they're the one team with one loss that would be in the game. Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson, who's with Kevin Sumlin. Before the game, Coach, you told me this team is confident and we're comfortable coming in here and playing our best. How did you knock off Alabama tonight? Well, they just kept playing. You know, our guys, we've gotten a little bit better every week. Uh, and they're believing, you know, this senior group that, that you know, they really bought into what the new coaching staff, it's hardest on those guys. And they're doing a great job of leading. I'm just, I'm happy for them. You know, they came to Texas A&M and, and who would have thought we'd be playing Alabama in, the, in their senior year, the number one team in the country. And the way they played today, they led us and I, I couldn't be happier for this team. Uh, we have to ask you about Johnny Manziel. He continues to amaze you, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, he, he, no moment's too big for him. Uh, it, it gives us, it gives our, our players a sense that, you know, we can score from anywhere and, and we can get, win the games. And I think that's a, a contagious feeling. I, like I said, these guys played their hearts out. What a football game. And, and uh, you know, it's just the last couple weeks we've been getting better and all came together tonight. Well, congratulations and welcome to the SEC. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Burn. First time the Aggies have ever played in Tuscaloosa. Bear Bryant coached at both schools. So did Gene Stallings. And I'm thinking right now the 27 men who made the trip, all of whom played for Bear Bryant at Texas A&M. And they were honored before this game began. What this trip must mean to them. And as good as Johnny Manziel play, remember that defense, three turnovers that they forced in this football game and a goal line stand. And a look at the player of the game presented by Russell Athletic. It's the policy of Texas A&M's football program to not allow freshmen to meet with the media. So Tracy will not have a chance to talk with Johnny Manziel on camera. My guy, Gary, was industrious and went up and talked to him anyway before the game. <laughs> Gotta <began>. do it. <laughs> And now it's time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. It's a defensive play. It is described by Dave South of the Aggie Radio Network. This is fourth down. There's the snap. He's rolling. He's throwing. It's intercepted. A&M. Aggies just intercepted the ball and returned it out to the five-yard line.
And so DeShazer Everett makes the big play, the key stop, the second interception of McCarron in this ball game. Texas A&M wins again on the road in one of the most inhospitable places in the country. They win at Alabama. For Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Tuscaloosa. A&M wins it. Chief Post Game Show is next.